Hello, today we are going to be installing an Apricorn Duo in a Mac Pro Tower. Now we're going to be installing this as a RAID. Now, just for a little background, let's look and see what the acronym RAID stands for. These are a list of the various things that it is proposed that RAID stands for. So the truth is, it's an acronym that we have really no idea what it stands for. But even though we don't know that, we do know what a RAID is. A RAID is a number of different storage devices. In our case, it will be solid state devices that are working in tandem in order to improve performance. The very principle is simple. Like if you will have two people working on a job at the same time, in theory you can get the job done in half the time. Well in the same way we're going to be using a RAID in order to come up with two solid state drives that are working in tandem in order to give us a much greater speed than we could ever get with a single drive. Now as we go through this video don't get confused by the fact that pictures of drives and the uh, d drive designations within the terminal may not be matching. This is an amalgamation of work that I have done where actually I was experimenting with six different drives. Your choice of drive is going to be very very important. The quality and speed of the different solid state drives on the market is highly variable. And if you get two drives that are very slow, even putting them in, in a RAID, it may give you a speed which is not as fast as a single fast drive that's on the market. So when you select your drives, don't think that you can just you grab a few old solid state drives you happen to have lying around. That's not a good idea. Don't go out and pick up the cheapest things you can buy. That's not a good idea either. If you're going to go ahead and put a RAID in your machine, I recommend going and getting some brand new, carefully matched uh, solid state drives, which are the fastest that are on the market. Now, I ultimately settled on the Samsung 850 Pro series. But by the time that you are watching this video, you may find that there is a better drive out there. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to be using a 2009 model Mac Pro tower. Uh, the towers came out between about uh, 2008 up until about 2012. And of course there are differences inside, but the basic principles should be about the same. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the power cord. This should be obvious, but it's very easy to forget. Next we get this lever at the back. This lever is the locking mechanism that uh, controls the cover. By opening up the lever like this, this will unlock the uh, cover and allow you to remove it. Okay, now let's open up our drives and let's open up our Apricorn RAID card and get them ready. Notice these small connectors on the bottom. This is important partly because it allows us to know the top and the bottom, but also it's important to know because we should not touch these with the hands. If we touch them with the hands, we'll get oil and grease on them, and this can compromise the reliability of the cord. Be especially attentive to this hook. This hook will engage a locking bar later, which is important for having the card mechanically secure against the motherboard. Next, we have to mount our drives. Take the two cards and put them in the slots. Then take the enclosed screws and make them firm. Next we need to locate a free PCIe connector. If you're using a 2008 uh, model Mac Pro Tower, you really need to use one of the two bottom connectors. The two top ones will not give you an adequate performance. However, any Mac Pro Tower from 2009 onward should give you no trouble. You would use any free connector. Next, you need to locate the locking bar. 
Now this, uh, this arrangement may be a little bit different depending upon what model you're using, but everyone will have a way in which of moving the locking bar backwards and forwards. In my model, this is a little button which is located on this big plastic cage. If you move the plastic cage backwards, it disengages the locking bar. Now you need to remove the locking mechanism which holds all the cards in place. Uh, this is normally a small bar with two thumb screws. If you disconnect the th two thumb screws and remove it, then you will have access to the cards. There is a small metal plate, a small strip, which is about one and a half centimeters wide and about 15 centimeters long. Now mine has been removed, but if you have yours, then go ahead and remove it now. Go ahead and place the card very carefully into the PCIe slot, making sure that it is very well seated. After that, you move the locking mechanism back so that this bar locks your card into place. Place the little bar back in position that locks the cards into place. This makes sure that your cards are firmly in place and are not likely to slip around and cause problems later. Now when you are selecting a free PCIe slot, you should be very sensitive and aware of where your graphic cards are. Graphic cards tend to generate a lot of heat and they will usually have a cooling fan built into them. Try not to position your uh, RAID card in such a way that it interferes with the flow of air. This could cause problems with your graphic card causing it to overheat. Now the mechanical installation is finished. All we need to do now is to put the uh, plate back on. To do this again make sure that the rear locking lever is open. Place the plate back into position, lock it, and you're ready. Okay, let's uh, take our computer, put it back, plug everything in, power it up, and just make sure everything is working okay. If you, everything is working okay, then at least the hardware section of our upgrade is finished. At this point, it would be really nice if I could tell you that the whole job is done and you can go about your business, but unfortunately, this is not the case. We have to deal with the software. Now, before we deal with the software, we really need to know what version of the operating system we're dealing with. Come down to the Apple sign, and you will see something that is marked uh, about this Mac. Go to About This Mac and it will tell you what the operating system is. Now in my particular case I'm using El Capitan which is version 10.11. Now at the time I'm putting this video together this is the most current operating system. Now a few words are in order. Apple has not upgraded its operating system in many many years. Each operating system that has come out is uh, by no stretch of the imagination could be considered an upgrade because they're continually dumbing it down and in the process of dumbing it down the operating systems keep descending into further and further levels of uh, uselessness. If you're using anything earlier than El Capitan all you need to do is open up Disk Utility because all the tools that we need are already there. But with the advent of El Capitan, the tools for creating a RAID were removed from it. So from here on out, I'm going to be describing the procedure using El Capitan. First, let's go to our uh, main boot drive and let's open up our applications. In Applications, there is a folder called Utilities. Go to Utilities. In our Utilities, there are two programs we need to run one of which is Disk Utility, and the other one is Terminal. Let us open Disk Utility first. Navigate until you find the first hard drive that you've installed. Once you find this, go ahead and press on the Erase button. This will format the drive, but uh, just as importantly, it will make sure that everything is working correctly. Now, if you look, there's a square at the bottom, and it will say things such as location, connection, etc., etc., etc. The most important thing to notice is the device designation. In my case, my drives were disk 0 and disk 1, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will be the same for you. Now, this is important, very important. 
super super important tattoo it on your arm tattoo it on your forehead whatever this is very important if you make a mistake here you could lose a lot of data you a lot of work and it will cause you endless grief so i cannot overemphasize this now once you have your device designations and once you've formatted these drives you've basically done everything that disk utility will allow you to do at this point we need to go and do some real work but because our tools were removed we're going to have to open up the terminal and use that once you've opened up your terminal program you'll see a prompt and there at the prompt you type in diskutil space list. Go ahead and hit the return button. This will list all the devices on your computer. This will show you the drive designations of your drives you're wanting to make the RAID, but more importantly, it's showing you the drive designations of the devices you should not be touching and should not be messing with. Once we're comfortable in knowing the drive designations of all the drives on our computer, then we can proceed to the next step. Now the process of zeroing the drives is something that you should do only if you're using a second-hand drive. If you're using brand new drives, you can go in and skip this process. The idea is that if you're using second-hand drives, you need to return them both to some base state. And the easiest way to do this is to simply write zeros to the entire solid-state drive. If you're using an operating system before El Capitan, it's easy. All of these functions are built into your disk utility. However, true to form, if we're using El Capitan, we have to do this from the terminal. From our prompt, type in diskutil secure erase zero disk zero. Now remember, for me, I'm using disk 0 and disk 1, so I need to do this for both disks. But I don't know what your drive designations will be. You need to keep track of that. Once you've typed this in and hit the return button, it will take a while. But fortunately, it does give you a kind of a status indicator, which reports every 10%, 20%, 30%, like that. So you'll be able to know that everything is working okay. Well, the time has come to set up our RAID and our operating system. Again, if you're dealing with an operating system before El Capitan, this can easily be done within Disk Utility. But, because we are dealing with El Capitan, we have to do it in the terminal. Go to the terminal and type in Disk Util, Apple RAID, Create, Stripe, SSD underscore RAID JHFS plus disk 0 disk 1 Now let's look a little closer at the syntax. First of all, disk util is the set of tools we've been dealing with. Apple RAID is what we are trying to set up. Create is a fairly obvious statement. Stripe. This is indicating what kind of RAID we want to set up. In this case, the term Stripe implies we are setting up a RAID 0. SSD RAID is the name of our volume. We could put any name we want, actually. JHFS Plus is our directory format. Disk 0 and Disk 1 are my particular drive designations, but again, you need to know yours. When we press the return key, it should not take very long at all. When it is finished, the volume should mount automatically on your desktop, and we now have a fully functioning RAID. Congratulations! I need to say a few words about trim. It is a characteristic which is inherent to solid-state drives that the basic elements in the memory can only take a certain number of hits before they go bad. As a practical matter, that doesn't necessarily mean that the reliability of solid-state drives has gone down because there are a lot of internal functions that are constantly monitoring and locking out the parts which have gone bad. One of the technologies for doing this is called trim. 
Now, Apricorn states uh, quite clearly that their RAID card supports trim. The Apple operating systems now support trim. And most of the drive manufacturers say they support trim. So what is the problem? Well, the problem is that the implementation of trim is not consistent. Because of which there are a lot of cases of reported data loss due to these problems in the implementation of trim. Now, because of the seriousness of the problem of data loss, I'm not going to tell you how to uh, uh, turn on trim in the operating system. But I figure if you're smart enough, if you have the technical savvy, to look and see the various devices and see how well they implement or how well they don't implement trim, see how reliable Apple's implementation of it, if you're willing to consider all of these factors to safely decide whether trim is right for you, then I figure you have the technical expertise in order to figure out how to turn it on.